This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest analysis on entertainment and lifestyle stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshunke. Yes, that's me. <laughs> Hello. I'm you waiting for this. It. Yes, that's me. We need to end, to right? End. Yeah, yes. we need to end. But it's okay. We'll, ah, we'll accommodate you. No. I want to become the yes, that's me guy. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Laurie Lachlan has agreed to plead guilty and to serve two months in prison. We thought it was very important to bring this update because we've talked mm -hmm. about this admission scandal a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, her husband is expected to serve five months. She also agreed to a $150,000 fine and 24 months of supervised release that will include 100 hours of community service. Their plea arrangement or agreement includes special provisions that allow them to argue during sentencing that there was prosecutorial misconduct during the legal proceedings and that they received ineffective counsel from their defense team. Mm. What's the point, Ife? Let us, let us know from your legal side. Um, there's actually no point. Now they just see that <laughs> they just see that they have a um, lesser sentence. No, they they see that if they proceed with the case, they would actually get a longer sentence, and it's only mm. why. So right now they are getting a very good counsel from mm. their lawyer. from their lawyers that because they have a leverage the based on prosecutorial malfunction mm. and all of that. But I'm wondering why this took so long. Yes. So you guys didn't have a when case. Hoffman is, mm -hmm. has forgotten she that, has she... that she was in jail. So you guys could have just done this and gotten it over with. Now you're getting No, fired. they didn't have the leverage at that point. Remember, it was um, mm. the last time we had this conversation was when they realized that um, so the prosecutors were yeah, covering yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. So now they have a leverage, and I think that's why they're getting what yeah. they're getting. Uh, well, I think it's a smart move. It's a smart move right now that they're making. But five months, the one and um, two months, I don't get it. Is it because it's the guy? <laughs> Why one is longer than the other? Because mm -hmm. yeah. they they come because it has to be gender plan. equality and everything. Mm -hmm. There has to be, but I, th I think it has to do with this is a guess now. The mm -hmm. feminists don't talk now. Uh, is she not talking. Don't he, fam? I think oh, it I has to do. Oh, you're a feminist. That's true. I think it has to do with who spoke, who was uh, uh, more in charge of that conversation and the transaction that happened. Because I'm very sure that two of them are not sending two different emails in regards to they one child. They were and holding <laughs> each other's hands. If you press the half Baby. side, I'll yeah. press the half side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing that has to do with like, um, it has a Who's part email? to play yeah, yeah. In, in persecutions. But yeah, good for them. So I'm I happy that this see. is coming to an end, I think. Yeah, and we can move, move on. on. Mm. And the children as well can begin to move on with their lives. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so on to the next story. Shay Shay's Instagram account um, is deactivated after claims that it was hacked. She took to her Twitter page yesterday to say her Instagram page has been compromised and that her privacy is being violated, encouraging her followers to ignore all DMs from her Instagram account and to not share any personal information. But now it appears that the drama might have taken another turn as it's we can't see the account, basically, in simple terms, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, joining us virtually to share his opinion on this um, matter is Bami Dele Lekong, a legal practitioner and an influencer. Hi, Lekong. Hello, Elsie. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm actually great. Um, it's a great day to be here, you know, when news are flying around. So, um, yes, it's a great day to be here. Okay, so um, I'm sure you've seen the story and you are kind of the celebrity friend. So <laughs> what, what do you think? Do you agree that this was hacked or you think something fishy is happening? So, I mean, we've, we've been here, we've seen people post for nudes, you know, we've seen people owning with their chest and say, okay, this is my nude and I think I want to own it to my chest. But um, whatever is flying around, I, don't, I wouldn't call that nude, you know, so I don't see why anyone should be denying that they were hacked or not. But also, looking at it from a second um, perspective, it seemed as though she posted those pictures, obviously, you know, but I think someone took it and then decided to help her distribute it more. You know, there's always, there will always be a receiver, and there will not be someone who now decides to spread the entire, you know, um, news all around. Because if you check from the communication, um, you know, trail, someone actually sent that picture from her DMs because she said she didn't approve of those pictures to be, um, to be posted. So she agreed that she took those pictures, but whoever is leaking them now is what we don't know. So I don't buy the idea of her account being hacked and all of all this stuff, you know. If you're going to drop an EP or like, you want to drop an album or a song or whatever it is, you know, just do it and post your news with your chest to accept it. But 
don't give us the oh you got hacked and all of those stuff it's i mean it's 2020 people aren't really buying some certain kind of ideas again or certain kind of excuses again so that's just what i think about that mm. wow hmm. yeah. so you think that yeah. this is a pr stunt it feels like it i mean it feels like a pr stunt but i mean if it's not a pr stunt that would that would I don't think anyone wants to post like a picture that does that's never even showing your full nude and claim that to be nude. If I wanted to hack your account, I think I'll post something very, 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 very risky, you know. Mm. The kind of video that got Kim Kardashian to where she is right now. That is the kind of content I want to post. You know, but not you staying on your bed and you know, just being in your natural habitat. I wouldn't call that nudes and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't that... use that as a point to hack someone's account. So that's that's my own um, that's my opinion on that. And isn't that the reason why we should believe uh, that okay, it's probably um, someone else doing this because if she wanted to post a nude, like you said, she would do it with her chest. <laughs> How do you guys say it, right? Mm -hmm. She'd do it with her chest and she'd just put it out there and she would own it or even deny it with a proper nude because that would make more headlines. <laughs> deny with a proper nude. <laughs> yeah, she would deny a proper nude than <laughs> trying to deny this. So I believe somebody is actually trying to act or somebody at the Instagram mm. because she's saying that um, she didn't deny the picture that she took the mm. picture. Ma she's just saying it's not oh, from a recent conversation. Yeah. So. I think my, my, the bigger question now is moving forward. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Lekon. Is Can she get this account back if it's been deactivated? Because I know like for someone like Shay Shay and the number of following that she's had, I don't think it's, she doesn't have a strong following. Like we say, she would bounce back like almost immediately mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So what do you think You know, this looks like for her going forward? So um, I, would speak, I would speak from the influencer point of view. So people have had like their account deactivated, you know, deleted and all this stuff. Her account is probably deactivated because she flagging the Instagram, you know, community guidelines, which is obviously going against, you know, you posting nude pictures of yourself. Mm -hmm. So Instagram wouldn't know if you were, if you were hacked or, you know, or you posted it intentionally. All they know is that your nudes or like your naked pictures are actually going around the internet. So our account has been deactivated. Now, if she's lucky enough to get the account back, that would be great, you know, how do people get the account back after being um, deactivated? But if not, having to start from the beginning, she, she from the first instance is not your, um, she's not one that you, know, you ordinarily want to follow if you're not a core fan or a, or a huge consumer of her content or her music. So it might take a while, you know, for her to bounce back, but I mean, I'm wishing her all the best. I mean, I might probably just follow her. Who knows what we might be seeing next? So, um, from an influencer <laughs> point of view, what is what are the procedures to get your account back in case she doesn't know this and she was actually at? What's she supposed to do to get that account back? Um, so, the very first thing for her to do is to you know send um, send a mail to support you know to, um, to like Instagram support team, you know um, send them pictures, means of identification, that's your international passport or like a means of them identifying you. Um, report the incidents, you know, let them know it was an it was it was an it was an accident, you know, that your nudes got leaked mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, you know, so pretty much once you do that, you know, if they find your your um, your complaint to be viable, then they will tell you, okay, do this particular thing, send a signature and all of all those stuff then. If you're lucky enough, you get your account back. If not, uh, people have been having their accounts lost on Twitter for like a very long time from now. So she's glad it's not Twitter, but to be Twitter, I'll tell her to just open a new account and move on from there because they don't really, they don't take things like that easily. Right. Okay, thank you for your time. I'm hoping that with her verification um, the verified handle and her number following Instagram should definitely listen to her. Thank you for doing tea with oh, us this you. afternoon. Hopefully. Thank you so much. I mean, and I also honestly truly wish, you know, most of my industry colleagues too would support her because most of them actually would, because I think Techno posted something recently saying, if you know you want to, um, you know, if you know you want to trend, post your news with your full chest and stop showing us chest and bomb. <laughs> and I'm like, oh wow, that's... Mm. Techno, oh. Is <laughs> Techno is savage. <laughs> Savage, but thank you so very much for having me. I honestly appreciate it. All right, Bye. thank you. So, back to Ife Omai and Ife Oluwash, okay? Do you think that was honestly? Um, I believe um, she was hacked because if she was going to post nude, I believe she would just post the full thing and not that what she posted. Because we have people, you do video calls with but people you know, and they're like no, that. No way, let me tell day. you. If she just posts, especially this particular type of nude we're talking about, if she It'll puts it out there talk. without coming back to say she was hacked, that is making people now think, no, you were not hacked. I don't think people will pay attention to Tiwa uh, Sorry, say she issues nude like that as they will pay attention to tiwa savage nude or mm. yemi aladis mm. nude so if this was a pr stone then it's a possibility mm. that this conversation mm. needed to have been taken
taking to Twitter so First. that we can now pay attention to what she's calling a nude. Yeah. Because the word has gone past. I just want to give her a benefit of a doubt. Yeah, though. okay. Because oh, what, what I what I saw was that she took that picture, she sent it to somebody on Instagram. Yeah. As wow. DMs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Somebody else gets the Lucky account. Guy. In very pretty nude, I must say. Good taste. Very. The pose was very nice. Um, <laughs> and then somebody else gets into the account and then um, goes through her, her whatever and finds that image and, you know, resource, re brings Redistribute. it to life again. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's what I think happened, but um, it could definitely be a PR stunt. And it's not beneath her because I think she needs it as well. Oh, wow. So. No, I'm not. Mm. <clears throat> okay, just hold. No <laughs> it's tea time. We'll go on a break. But when we come back, we have more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I just see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Baba? Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do Everybody feeling alright. Minimal mm. Apala music is for mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. The Lagos State Government has inaugurated a state post COVID 19 pandemic review committee with veteran Nollywood actress Joker Silva as chairman. Inaugurating the committee in Ikeja, the Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Mrs. Zamat Akin Bili Yusuf, I'm sorry if I murdered that name, said the six member committee is expected to draw out suggestions and recommendations on ways to reactivate the industry. The committee was inaugurated to reactivate the tourism, arts and culture sector of the state. Now joining us via Skype is the CEO of Saffron Travels, Abimbola Ibiti. Hello, Abimbola. Hi, Elsie. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Okay, so as a key player in the industry, um, if you are on this committee or you um, saddled with the uh, responsibility of um, making sure the committee gives the best recommendation, especially regarding tourism, what will you say to them? The state itself is, in, is endowed with a lot of tourist attraction resources that include natural, water-based, cultural, historical, commercial attractions. And in spite of this potential, there are actually a few traces of viable developments in the tourism sector. So basically, if we were to be on this committee, we would suggest that there needs to be a lot more encouraging measures aimed at three specifics. The first being the maximization of the potentials of hospitality. There is a lot of untapped resources in Nigeria, in Lagos states in particular, because we already have the numbers. Um, our Lagos Muritala Mohammed Airport actually has numbers. We have an average of about a million um, um, inbound travels every day. Now, the second will be minimization of maintenance of tourist infrastructures and transportation problems. That is a huge problem for us in Lagos State. Even when we are organizing our local tours, um, local tours meaning um, our recreational tours for maybe our corporate or educational tours for our students, you know. So there needs to be um, um, a minimization of the maintenance of these tourist infrastructures and addressing of the transportation problems. The third would be increased measures to guarantee personal safety in the state. You cannot overemphasize the insecurity issues we have. And this is something we've spoken quite a number of times to the government about. The security needs to be tightened to, to actually keep our, um, our tourists, to make them feel safe such that they would want to do a lot more. So even Nigerians for Nigeria are scared of being tourists in Lagos. They're going to tourist attractions. They are scared. What if our bus gets hijacked? What if this happens to us or something? So I believe if we look at these three key, um, three key um, points, 
they would go a long way in ensuring that we boost the tourism sector in Lagos State. And bearing in mind, there's a fundamental rule of thumb in tourism industry management, which is one dissatisfied customer has more influence than 10 content ones. So we need positivity all the way, all the way. It's good that you um, ended with positivity because I think the initiative was about, was pretty much about that to make sure that um, the industry isn't necessarily stocked or whatever. But the, the feedback you're giving is awesome, but these problems are bigger than COVID-19. If anything, it's kind of harder to even make those implementations now. So um, talking very simple, layman English here, what is that one thing that they could do right now in the industry that can say, okay, would have a positive effect despite the fact that there's COVID-19 in town? Okay, um, one thing they could do is enhancing the security in the state. It's a big problem. We get feedback from a lot of our um, corporate um, tourists, right? The issue they always have is um, security. It's a big deal. If the government can actively show that uh, at these major tourist attractions, we deployed a, um, a number of security operatives there, people will feel safe. Nigerians, you'll be surprised that Lagosians that live in Lagos that do not want to do tourist activities in Lagos State because of this reason. And they are losing a lot of revenue due to these security issues. All right. Thank you so much, Abimbola, for your time. We hope that they would listen and implement these recommendations from you. All right, then. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. So, yeah, if I... Oh. Basically, um, I like this committee being put together because everything has been on a lockdown for a while now and obviously the creatives are starving as well. So we need to know that life goes on. Even though there's COVID-19, what are the measures that will be put in place? How can we still work and make sure that we're still safe? So this is a very good um, initiative by the... Uh, what's it called now? The Lagos State Lagos I hope it's so. not a, just a busybody thing. Um, it sounds like it to me. They had that for the federal level where Alibaba was the chairman. It's also in this one. So I'm wondering, what are you doing then that you're now in this one? And <laughs> like, it's, it's like now just like an accolade thing. Like, oh, I'm in the community oh, and I'm a chairman yeah. and I have this initiative. And yeah, But cool. like... But I like what you said, yeah. where you said, we have these big problems, but there's COVID-19. So where do we start from? So yeah. it feels like we already have so much problem that even when you now add COVID-19, it, it, it makes it harder for anything to happen. But yeah. hopefully, I wish we had more time because I would have to touch on the measures they are taking in the industry mm -hmm. to make sure that people are comfortable to travel again yeah. but anyway i hope we we'll have her again soon yeah that's how i wrap up this episode of tea time thank you for watching and do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag tea time or twitter to us at plus tv africa you can also send your opinions via whatsapp to 0906057519 my thank you as always to go to my co-anchors ife omai and ife olua yes that's me and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.